Google Home Max, late as hell, OnePlus. No way! They're finally here! I thought Anthony was just throwing money away buying graphics cards on AliExpress. Let's go check these things out! After I tell you about today's sponsor. Be Quiet's Dark Rock 4 and Pro 4 near silent air coolers feature wave contoured cooling fins and easy top mounted installation. Learn more through the links below. Okay, so apparently what we think we ordered is an Elsa GTX 1080 and a Maxun GTX 1060 5 gig. And this is what we've got. So why don't we start with the one that has no box. So we've got Elsa on here. That's actually like molded. So, you know, presumably there's some kind of volume to this production. And then it's got a sticker on the fan that says De Broglie? I don't know what Debrogli is, but it doesn't sound very good. The board feels pretty heavy. It's got a lot of memory chips back here. So this seems somewhat credible, but there's no, no recognizable part number anywhere on it. It's got what looks like a serial and then a warranty void by tear or damage. And that's about it. I gotta say though, this shroud is sketching me out a little bit. I haven't seen many 1080s that are that sort of cheaply constructed. All right, so we know already that this one doesn't have five gigs of memory because Nvidia doesn't make a GTX 1060 with five gigs of memory. This is a funny thing for me. So Max Sun is using a really cheap heatsink design on this thing. Holy crow. I haven't seen something like this on a card above the like $100 price point in my memory. So you see, even though it has all of these aluminum fins, this is just a, uh, what is it like a, a cast design? I'm gonna check with Alex. Would this be cast aluminum? You see how the fins don't go all the way through? Actually, no, this was extruded. Extruded. Okay, so his theory is that it's actually extruded and that makes a ton of sense because then they just have this profile and they'd have the aluminum just kind of push through it and then they could just slice off heat sinks like this and then it's very little work to create these little slices for air to pass through and then these little spots where they can throw in a couple of heat pipes. This is a very inefficient way of cooling versus having fins that actually pass all the way through so you've got a lot more airflow. There's nothing really else about it that sets off warning bells other than the uh, plastic back plate, which will obviously not only serve no purpose for cooling, because even metal ones don't do that, but actually could make it worse. Holy crap. This might actually have five gigs of RAM. What is a 160 bit bus? Am I mistaken? Is there a five gig that like, like, you know what? Let's just, all right, so we've got benchmarks run for our reference Founders Edition GTX 1080 already, which means we can go ahead, pull that puppy off the bench here, and throw on the Elsa de Bruglie. How much less did we actually pay? I thought the idea was we were supposed to find things that were like cheap. Okay, so 720 US for the 1080? 325 US for the 1060. Okay. They've got some kind of tape over the SLI fingers. Why would they do that? And not like a, like a temporary looking tape. Like this doesn't look like it's intended to be taken off. These little heatsink fins on the back don't actually appear to be like attached to this aluminum plate in any meaningful way. So I doubt sincerely that they're really doing anything for cooling. It does show up as a GTX 1080. Benchmark's almost done, and honestly, everything here is looking pretty good so far. We haven't like power throttled or, or anything like that. So 6551, uh, average FPS of 49. How does that compare to our Founders Edition, Anthony? Our Founders Edition did 6576. Okay, so this one is bang on. 
That's actually pretty cool because compared to the overpriced mining cards that were available at the time, even though we did pay a lot of money for this thing and getting a warranty for it would probably be a pretty sketchy ordeal, we at least did save a significant amount of money. Spoil it for me. Was there anything I was supposed to notice that was bad about this one? That shroud is for a GTX 980 Ti, not a 1080. Did they reuse the PCB as well? The PCB is for an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 Founders Edition. But then they're just using a 980 Ti shroud on it. Yeah. Okay. There are model numbers on the back that coincide with an Apple Mac Pro uh, GeForce 7300 GT. So it's not like it's not a little sketchy, but by and large, we got what we paid for. I consider that one a success. All right. This one, oops. I am not quite as hopeful about. These fans are exactly as cheap as the heatsink. Oh, wait, hold on. Maybe they're not at, no, they're not as bad as I thought. It's out, out. Okay, you stop that. This isn't like an AMD card or something, is it? Okay, no, no, don't, don't tell me, don't tell me. Well, I'm not sure if I'm expecting it, but we should see performance similar to a GTX 1060. Frame rates look like about what I would expect from a 1060. Let's see what it is. It's actually showing up as 1065 gig with memory running at four gigahertz. So that would be eight effective. So at 3532, that's about 300 points less than we got with our Founders Edition 1060. But every piece of data we can find seems to confirm that this is in fact a five gig card. So those of you who have heard us rant on, uh, what was it? The 1070 Ti video and at various points on the WAN show will be aware of how we feel around here about manufacturers saying, this is a 1060, it's got six gigs of RAM, and this is a 1063 gig, but oh, by the way, it's actually also cut down in some ways. We don't like it, but apparently they're screwing around with this even more in other regions. Okay, so after some digging, what it looks like happened here is NVIDIA actually released a China-specific 5 gig version of the 1060 with the only difference, same number of CUDA cores, with the only difference being the bus width and the amount of memory. So it performs, as we saw, fairly similarly to a regular 1060, but what with the whole global DRAM shortage and all that, it comes in at a lower price and it is intended for internet cafes. So this card ended up accidentally on purpose on a marketplace, but it was actually for OEM sales only to these kinds of LAN cafes that are much more popular over there than they are over here. So once again, we actually got an okay value and the product itself was legit. So. Buying GPUs on AliExpress, good idea, bad idea? We're still not quite sure. <laughs> but it's, it's not obviously a complete scam. So that's actually better than I was expecting, to be perfectly honest with you. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more. And premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes on must know topics so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work that you love. Our own editor Taryn here and a few other LTT team members are learning about motion graphics, working through the course series Motion Graphics with Kurtz <clears throat> Motion Graphics. Nobody can pronounce Kurtzgesagt. Skillshare is really affordable with an annual subscription that works out to less than $10 a month. And the first 500 people who use our link in the video description will get their first two months of Skillshare for free. So check it out now. So thanks for watching guys. If you dislike this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured from a source that we definitely trust at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join. Well, that was fun. Now we've got a couple graphics cards that we bought that we don't need. So uh, we'll probably have like an eBay or a Craigslist link under the video.
at the end here if anyone actually wants a 5 gig 1060 or a 1080. Presumably you'll get no warranty coverage whatsoever, so. You know, the thing about mystery meat is it tastes best with a grain of salt. 